but we're here. Amen. Amen. Glad to be here. Praise God. I tell you, <clears throat> I really believe uh, that things are transpiring in our world today. Amen. <coughs> Heading towards the coming of the Lord Jesus. Amen. If you believe that Jesus came, then you've got to also believe that he's coming again. Amen. Amen. Praise God, because he said he would. And he gave a number of things uh, to us in his word uh, that help us to understand. Well, none of us, nobody's going to know the exact day or the hour. <coughs> but there's scriptures that indicate when you see these things come to pass. It says, know that it's near, even at the door. And I see those things. <clears throat> Another place in Hebrews says that we're not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. And so much the more as you see the day approaching. So there's an indication you can see the day approaching. Amen? Amen. And if a person, <clears throat> if a person will uh, dig into that Bible and listen to it, listen to what it's saying, study it, and uh, don't just read it, but listen to it. Amen. Amen. There's a lot of people who read the Bible, but they don't listen to what it's saying. And it's saying something. It's not a confusing book. If it's confusing, it's because we just don't understand it. But it says something. And uh, it tells us <coughs> that Jesus came, why he came, why he left, and why he's coming again. It tells us all those things. And uh, <coughs> again, he doesn't give us a, a date, you know, because he don't want us to have a date. He wants us to be ready regardless of when he comes. If, if, uh, if he had given us a date, there would be a lot of people that would be very insincere and they'd try to jump in the boat at the last minute, you know. And uh, the Lord doesn't want people to do that. He wants people to live for him uh, because they love him. Amen. I love the Lord. I know what it is to be in sin. I lived the first early part of my life up into my 20s, middle 20s, living very wild. And I know what that's all about. And uh, I don't want no more of that. This is the best that ever happened to me. Amen. I've never longed, desired to be back where I was. <clears throat> I'm not saying I don't get tempted. We all get tempted because we're humans. But I don't want to be the creature I used to be. I do not want to be that person no more, ever again. Because I suffered a lot of things. Amen. Amen. There's no saying that used to... An old comedian used to say, the devil made me do it. <laughs> but uh, the devil didn't make me do it. I gave myself to that. And uh, because of that, I, I allowed him access to my life to destroy me. <clears throat> but that was the best thing that ever happened to me, getting destroyed. Because it caused me to realize I needed God. Amen. So I don't regret, amen, having... Uh, been in a place where you look up to see the bottom as it said I don't regret that because it helped me to realize that I needed God <clears throat> and I've never looked back I don't want I don't want what I used to be praise God I want to uh, I want I believe in this I believe in this I believe that there's more to it like that song they just played your song sister Cooper that first song they sang there. And uh, I do believe there's more to it than today. 
and uh, that's what I'm living for. I'm 62, and uh, you know, I may live to be a hundred, but uh, I may not. <laughs> I've already had one heart attack, you know. So uh, I want to put the pedal to the metal, if anything. Live for the Lord with everything within me. He's my ticket out of here. He's my ticket out of here. But plus, I just like living for God. I, I like it. I like living the way the Lord instructs us to live. Yeah, I've heard people say before, you know, if you go start li- going to church and living for God, you can't do this and you can't do that. I don't want to do those things. I don't want to do those things. I like living right. It's, it's, it's good. I don't long for that other stuff. I get high, but not on drugs or not on alcohol. I get high on the Lord. I do. I, man, oh man, I've experienced some wonderful things since I've been living for the Lord. Amen. It's, it's really good. It's really, I remember being in a church service one time. Y'all, I, I felt like I was fixing to leave that place. I actually did. I don't, that's only happened to me one time, but I felt like I was fixing to be caught out of there. Just God just does these things, these wonderful things. Amen. The Bible says we sit in heavenly places. And it's not talking about off on a cloud somewhere, but it's talking about spiritual experiences that we experience with God. Man, oh man. Amen. I've experienced times, and those of you that's lived for the Lord for a long time, you can say it too, I'm sure, but there's been times where you experience times that you did not want to leave that place. You know, because it is just dynamic. Amen. You know, and uh, that's, that's what it is in living for the Lord. He's good. I, I love living for the Lord. I want to say also we're honored to have the Green family with us. Amen. This, amen. Sister Hernandez, I'm glad she's here tonight. We baptized her sometime back in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Amen. If you want to go to heaven, if you want to be what the Bible calls saved, amen, you got to repent of your sins. you got to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. For the remission of your sins, he's your Savior. It's his blood that washes away our sins. So his name is given to us in baptism. Amen. For that purpose. And receive the, the wonderful gift of the Holy Ghost. That's the Spirit of God. Amen. Praise God. <coughs> Amen. He's so good. I'm going to turn your attention tonight to Hebrews <coughs> chapter number 13. And I'm going to read just a couple of verses of Scripture. And we'll pray then, and I'll let you be seated. Praise God. Amen. The writer of Hebrews, I personally believe it was Paul. That's my opinion. We don't have the name of the person, but I believe it's Paul's. But regardless of who it is that was penning these words, it's the Word of God. And so the writer of Hebrews says, let your conversation or your behavior, you know, your conversation, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So, that we may boldly say, Christians can boldly say, because of this, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Amen. He will never leave me, nor forsake me. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for giving us this opportunity. Oh, God, to assemble in your name. You are here. I acknowledge that tonight, Lord. 
it's you that said that where two or three would be gathered together in your name, that there you'd be. I believe that. That is the truth. Your spirit is here with us tonight. I acknowledge you, and I pray that you would anoint this service, that every life here, through the word of the Lord, will be ministered to, that your spirit will touch us tonight and help us. Oh, God, help us to draw near you and live for you. And I ask for grace, Lord, that you'd help me to minister your word. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. You can be seated. <clears throat> Praise God. Amen. For he has said, verse 5, For he has said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. Amen. Praise God. I don't know if, if you are aware of it. To my knowledge, I, I, I'm... I will listen to any of you if you can show me, uh, but we don't have, I, I take it, uh, you know, he's referencing Jesus, right? He's referencing Jesus. He hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. <clears throat> Do you know where he said that in the Bible? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know where he said that in the Bible? I, I'm just, I would like for you to show me, uh, but I personally didn't find it. Amen. I'm not trying to stump you up or anything. I just want to just make up. There's another scripture. There's another scripture like this one a whole lot. In Acts chapter 20 and verse number 35. <clears throat> Amen. And uh, the apostle speaking here, he says, I have showed you all things, how that so laboring you ought to support the weak and to remember this, watch it, and, rem and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Can you show me where he said that in the scripture? <laughs> you don't have it. Did you know that? It's not that he didn't say it, but you don't have the quote in the Bible. You see, Jesus said many things, and Jesus did many things that are not written down. His disciples are saying, this is what he said. We heard him say that. Though you can't go and turn to a scripture that says that. They walked with him. They heard him. They were in his presence. It's Jesus said to them that it's more blessed to give than to receive. Though you don't have a quote, you can look through the gospels and it's not there. But Jesus did actually say that. And he you don't have the scripture uh, verbatim, the quote, the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are a biography of the life of Jesus and things that he said, uh, but not everything that he said. When you have the word of God, you have what he wanted you to know he said. He, you have a lot of miracles written down in the Bible. Did you know that? That Jesus did, but you know what? That's not all the miracles he did. He did a lot more miracles beside those, but those are there so that you can believe. And the things that we do have are there, are recorded by him, or they're recorded by his disciples that were with him. And that's what we're reading here. John chapter 21, verse number 25. John concludes his gospel. The gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, his life, death, burial, and resurrection. That's what the four gospels are. Tell about that account. And John 21 and verse number 25 says, And there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which, if they should 
be written, everyone, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Amen. Think about that. Think about that. You can go down to the library downtown, and there's books, books, books. I, I'm not the best reader, you know. I find myself having to read and then read again and then read again. I'm one of them people who get so distracted. Do you ever get distracted when you read? You ever go through reading a whole chapter and realize I didn't even hear what it said? I do that quite a bit. I have to force myself to really stay, stay attentive, you know. But uh, just think, you, you may think that, the, that John's exaggerating here. You may think that John is exaggerating here when he says, if everything that Jesus did was written down, I don't suppose the world itself could contain the books. He didn't say the library. He said the world could not contain the books that should be written. You know what that means? That Jesus did a lot of things. We've got a few of those things written down here. Amen. But Jesus did a lot of things. He healed a lot of people. Amen. He's a, you know what? Jesus Christ is the same. The Bible says yesterday and today and forever. Amen. Praise God. He's he did a lot of things that we have a record of in the Bible, but he did a whole lot of things that were not even recorded. Amen. He said a lot of things. Everything that he wants us to hear, though, is in the pages of this Bible. That's what he wants us to hear. If we want to know how to be saved, it's right here in this book. Amen. We have enough, amen, that should spark our faith to believe in him. Amen. Praise God. So he did say it's more blessed to give than receive. And he did say also, though you can't turn to it in a scripture, a quote from him, where it says, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. But he did say that. And he did mean it when he said that. He will never leave his people nor forsake them. Though you don't have an actual quote from him in the Gospels, the scriptures are full, you know, of things that tell us that. Amen. Isaiah said it like this. Isaiah chapter number 41 and verse number 10. Here's one scripture. It says, Fear thou not, I am with thee. He's talking to his people. Fear thou not, I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Verse 17 in the same chapter says, When the poor and needy seek water, and there is none, and their tongue faileth for thirst, I, the Lord, will hear them. I, the God of Israel, here's one, will not forsake them. He will not forsake them when they are in trouble. When they are in need. When they are in trouble. Amen. He will not forsake them. Amen. Another scripture is found in Psalms 37 and verse number 25. This one is actually pretty familiar to us. We've heard it many times over the years. The psalmist says, I have been young and now am old, yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Amen? Amen. Praise God. The psalmist goes on to say the same psalm, verse 28 of that psalm says, For the Lord loveth judgment. He loveth judgment. Amen. And forsaketh not his saints. Amen. They are preserved. They are preserved forever. That's a long time, isn't it? But, but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. Amen. 
God will not forsake the righteous. Amen. Praise God. He loves the righteous. Amen. He loves the people that love living for him and serving him. Amen. He will never forsake them. When the Hebrew writer gave us this scripture, he was writing to Christians. Amen. This is not a seed that is broadcast worldwide, though it can be for everybody, but it is for the people that are going to serve God. Amen. There's a promise from God that he will never leave us, nor will he ever forsake us. Amen. Amen. He will preserve his saints forevermore, but it's not so with those that are wicked. So there's several scriptures that indicate, though you may not have a verbatim quote from Jesus himself saying that in the Gospels, amen, the word of God indicates that is so. Amen? There is a scripture in Matthew 28, 20 that says, this is a reference when Jesus had risen from the dead and he was fixing to leave his disciples and he was sending them to teach them teach those that would believe in him to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, whatsoever Jesus had commanded his apostles. That's what he's talking about. And then he said this, And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. That's today. Come on. It's gonna, he's going to be with us all the way to the end. Amen. If tomorrow's not the end, he's still going to be there. And he's going to be with us all the way, even to the end of the world. To me, that tells me he is never going to forsake me. No matter what happens, I know, I believe, I surely believe that we are living in the end time. And I don't know what all is going to take place. And I don't know what all is going to transpire for me here in America, for you here in America, but one thing I do know for sure is God will never leave me nor forsake me if I live for him. If I live for him. Praise God. I want to live for him. I want to live for him. He will never leave us nor will he ever forsake us. But I want to provoke you to good works tonight because, again, the promise that he will never leave us nor forsake us is to his people. And we want to be one of his people. Amen. No matter where I find myself, I want to be one of his people. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I'd encourage you tonight. You know, the world holds a lot of uncertainties. A lot of things you never know. What's going to transpire? Our world, one person said it's on fire. And that was not even a Christian person that said that. Something's happening in our world. Our world is on fire. Amen. And it is. A lot of things are happening and transpiring. Amen. There's all kinds of atrocities taking place. Amen. People get up and they go do their business. And some of them don't come home. Because some maniac goes and does something crazy. Amen. Amen. We live in a godless society. We do. Any wonder why things are happening? Amen. I said, any wonder why things are happening? Praise God. Amen. So we want to be Christians. I want, I want that promise. I want that promise from God to rest on my life and stay on my life. Amen. I want to always know, amen, that he will never leave me nor forsake me. No matter where I find myself, no matter what place I find myself in life, I want to know that. Amen. amen. I want to know that, and that promise is to his people. Amen. I want to be one of those people. Yes. Don't you want to be one of those people tonight? Amen. amen. Praise God. It's not if he will be with us. He said he would be with us even unto the end of the world. Amen. But there's stipulations to that. And I know a lot of people don't want to hear no negative. 
Amen. Praise God. But you've got to face reality. You've got to really look at the Word of God, and you've really got to understand the Word of God. Praise God. Amen. A lot of people's reading somebody else's mail. Amen. Praise God. Amen. There's stipulations to the Word of God. You know, God's love, God's love, <clears throat> amen. Praise God. He loves everybody. He loves everybody. He loves people that's doing wrong. Did you know that? Praise God. Amen. He is not a respecter of persons when it comes to... To loving people. Amen. If he didn't love sinners, none of us would ever have had a chance. Amen. Praise God. Amen. He loves everybody, but not everybody is saved. Everybody can be saved. Amen. But not everybody is saved. Amen. He shed his blood. John the Baptist looked at Jesus as he was walking. And he said, he told his disciples, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. So Jesus died to take away the sin of the world. Yes. He didn't die just for a select few people. He died for the entire human race. He died for good people. He died for bad people. He died for Everybody. He died for young people. He died for old people. He died for yet red people, black people, white people. He's not a respecter of persons. Amen. Praise God. His love, his care for humanity. Amen. Praise God. It's not segregated to some group. Amen. He loves everybody. Amen. But you've got to do something to be saved. You've got to believe in his gospel. Amen? You've got to do something about your salvation. Each and every one of us do. Praise God. And that's the way it is throughout the word of God. Amen? God will never leave us, nor will he forsake us. But the scriptures, if you take the scriptures as a whole and understand them, you'll find out there's stipulations to that. Amen? Second, First Chronicles chapter 28 <clears throat> Amen. David uh, w was desiring to build a temple for the Lord. Amen. But he had too much bloodshed on his hands. And so God allowed his son Solomon to build the temple. And Solomon was fixing to become king and take over the kingdom. And this is what he said in verse 6. And he said unto me, Solomon thy son, he shall build my house and my courts for I've chosen him to be my son and I will be his father amen the Lord's speaking that moreover I will I will establish his kingdom forever if he be constant to do my commandments and my judgments as at this day now therefore in the sight of all Israel, the congregation of the Lord, and in the audience of our God, keep and seek for all the commandments of the Lord your God that you may possess the good land and leave it for an inheritance for your children after you forever. And thou, Solomon, my son, know thou the God of thy father and serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind for the Lord searches all hearts and understandeth all the imagination of the thoughts. If thou seek him, he will be found of thee. But if thou forsake thee, him, he will cast thee off forever. I said there's stipulations to the promise that God will never leave us nor forsake us. We must stay with him. If we want that word, that promise upon our lives, we must cleave to God. Amen. 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 Second Chronicles 15 and 1 and 2. 
It says, And the Spirit of God came upon Azariah, the son of Oded. And he went out to meet Asa, which was king of Judah, and said unto him, Hear you me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin, the Lord is with you while you be with him. If you seek him, he will be found of you. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. I said there's stipulations. Amen. I want the Lord to be with me. I want the Lord, no matter where I find myself in this world, no matter what I face, I want the Lord to be with me. But I know after reading the word of God, if he's going to be with me, I've got to be with him. Come on, I've got to be with him. I need to get up and walk with Jesus daily. Come on, I don't, I don't, he don't want to be my hobby. He wants me to live for him every day. And I promise you, no matter what I face, no matter what I go through, no matter what I encounter, he's not going to leave me. And he's not going to forsake me. He'll be with me always, even to the end of the world. But I've got to be with him. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, praise God. Somebody clap your hands to the Lord. There's stipulations. It's important for us. We come here tonight so that we can understand, I hope. <clears throat> you mean, I don't know if you like what I'm preaching or not, but I'm telling you the truth. Amen. I want you to be successful. I want you to... <laughs> it's so very, very important. So very, very important for each and every one of us. To get some convictions in our lives. Amen. Convictions to get up and walk with God every day. He doesn't want us to be hit and miss. Amen. James said, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. We can't be double-minded. What is double-minded? It's, it's being one thing one day and the next something else the next day. Living for God one day, and then we don't see him again till the weekend. I want you to know something. God doesn't want to be a weekend God. He wants us to live for him every day. Amen. Oh, my. Listen to me. Don't you want his protective hand to be there. I want his protective hand to be there. Amen. I remember one time. And if you've heard me say this before, just bear with me. <laughs> but my sister Teresa, uh, <clears throat> back when her kids were little, her boys, one of them was in, I think he was in 4-H or FFA and you know, they have, they raise animals and show them and stuff, I think, what it was. It may just have been some of his dad's, he has a pigs, <clears throat> and he lived off in Kempner. And uh, his dad had a, not, not a whole lot of acres, a few acres. It was kind of growed up, evidently. And uh, he would send his boys down there to feed the hogs, you know. And, uh, man, I tell you, I would pray for those boys regularly every day try to pray for them i'd call their names out because i wanted my nephews to be saved amen <laughs> praise god and you know what things happen in life sometimes things happen unexpected things happen sometimes and this is one of those unexpected things he went down to feed the hogs and as he walked down to feed the hogs the, the grass was grown up and a rattlesnake bit him a rattlesnake bit him, bit him on his calf, and uh, he went ballistic. He, it scared him, you know, it, uh, it was horrifying to him, and he was just a kid, teenage, not even a teenager probably, and he just, he just took off running. That's one of the things you're not supposed to do. <laughs> get, get that blood a pumper, you know, circulating that venom all throughout his body. 
and they lived outside of Kempner. His dad had been in, in the National Guard quite a number of years. And uh, so I don't understand why, but <clears throat> his dad grabbed him. And he did put ice on it. He grabbed him, and he took off to uh, Darnell Army Hospital to get to try to get that venom out of him, you know. And uh, he went there, and for some reason, I don't understand this, but they would not take him. They would not take his son. That's unbelievable, isn't it? And he went there because he was National Guard, I guess. And anyway, so after they wouldn't, wouldn't take him, he put him in the truck and was heading to, to Temple, Scott and White. He was speeding, you know. And a highway patrol pulled him over. Amen. <laughs> highway patrol pulled him over. He told him, my son's got bit by a rattlesnake. And uh, I'm rushing him to the hospital. Darnell Army the Hospital wouldn't take All this time, this time's ticking by, you know. And that venom's in his leg. And uh, so he, he, uh, he, 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 he's there, and the, the highway patrol stops him. And instead of letting him go on, the highway patrol makes him wait for an ambulance. So he's waiting there for the ambulance, and, a, and, and quite a, a long time has transpired from the time that he got bit by the rattlesnake and all that commotion taking place, and I don't know how long, a couple of hours probably, you know, at least. Huh? I don't remember how long it was, but it was way too long. Amen. Praise God. And they took that boy in there, and... Uh, uh, you know, and, and they started to try to work him, and all that venom was contained in one little spot. Isn't that amazing? You would have thought out of all of that, that venom would have been throughout his body. They did more damage to him trying to get it out of him than the snake bite did to him. They did more damage to him, cutting him, trying to get it out than it did uh, the snake bite did it. Praise God. Don't tell me there won't be times when you're going to need the hand of God to be there. Amen. He'll be there. If you'll be there with him, he'll be there for you. You don't know what tomorrow holds. I don't know what tomorrow holds. But I know one thing. I want to know that the Lord is there. Amen. And if I'm going to have the Lord there, I need to be there with him. If I will not forsake him, he will not forsake me. Amen. I need Jesus. Amen. Praise God. I need Jesus. You need Jesus. Amen. We need him. But you know what? We're going to have to be there for him. After what he did, after, after what Jesus did, did you know he did something great for us? He willingly did what he did. He willingly. Nobody made him. Nobody made him go to the Calvary. Roman soldiers nailed him to the cross, but that's not what held him there. We are the ones that held him there. What do you say? We, our, his love for us. His concern for us is what put him on the tree. He put himself in the place where he would be crucified. The whole purpose of him coming to this world. Amen. And I want you to know something. Listen to me. That's very serious to the Lord. He, he did a very, very serious thing. Amen. He did. Praise God. Something that is very uh, serious with him. I don't know what word to use. It's, it's just, it's something that he puts a lot of weight on. Amen. And he considers, listen to me, he considers that it is our reasonable service. That's what the scripture says. Amen. We're to present our bodies, a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto him, which is our reasonable service. In other words, he considers if it's the, it's the least we can do. Yeah. Hey, we're not earning our salvation. Jesus paid for our salvation. Yeah. 
Amen. But he considers that if he could die for us, surely we can live for him. That's the least we could do. We should do it, and we should do it cheerfully. We should do it. Oh, come on. I don't want the world. I want to live for Jesus. Amen. I want him in my life. If something comes up, I want to know that I can call on him. And he'll be there. He won't leave me. He won't forsake me. Never know. The horrible thing that happened in the Florida school the other day. You know? Nobody expected that, I don't believe. If they had, they wouldn't have been there that day. Nobody expected that. And there's wacko things happening all over. Crazy things. Crazy things. Amen. Somebody's been planting bombs on people's doorsteps in Austin, Texas. They've already killed, what, two people? And injured how many? Why? Why? Why do that? Why do that? Praise God. You see, never know what's going to happen. But we can know one thing, that he'll never leave us nor forsake us. But it don't mean you won't ever encounter anything. It don't mean you won't ever face anything. It, it just means that you can rest assured. Amen. That all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are the call according to his purpose. Didn't say everything was good, but you can rest assured it's going to come out to your benefit in the end. Amen. Praise God. We face things. We go through things. But the scriptures plainly teach, amen, that we have got to be there ourselves. It's not a one-sided relationship. He'll never leave us nor forsake us, but we need to be there and never forsake him. Amen. I'm not saying that we're perfect. I am saying if we mess up, we need to repent and get back up. We need to walk with Jesus. Amen. The world holds a lot of, in, you know, a lot of things. Amen. And we need to be close to Jesus. Amen. Praise God. First Peter chapter 3, verse number 10 says, For he that will love life and see good days. Peter's actually quoting an Old Testament scripture in this. He said, He that will love life and see good days. Who wants that? Y'all want to love life and see good days? Come on, is this the truth or not? Come on, this is the truth. This is the word of God. This is what God's word says. He that will love life and see good days, let him do what? Let him refrain his tongue from evil. Quit cussing people out and quit lying and all that kind of stuff, you know. Let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. Let him eschew evil. What's that mean? It means stay away from it. Don't be messing with it. Get away from evil. Be a Christian. Don't just say I'm a Christian. Be a Christian. Amen. Amen. Jesus said many draw near to me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. He wants us to really live for him. Let us eschew evil. Amen. And do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. In other words, pursue it. Blessed are the peacemakers, Jesus said. Why are you going to do all of this? Why do you want to do all this? Here, it, it answers it. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. And his ears, oh, come on, I need him to be there answering my prayers, Freddie. His ears are open to their prayers. His ears are not open to the wicked. His ears are not open to the unrighteous. His ears are not open to just everybody. People have this idea we're all children of God, everybody. Well, it is true we all came from Adam and Eve. But Jesus told those that were of this world, you're of the devil. You're of your father, the devil. Not everybody is of God. 
Amen. Let me tell you something. People that are giving their lives to Jesus have promises on their lives. But I can't say that about everybody. Amen. It is true that God is so merciful and so kind that he looks down and helps sinners, no doubt. Amen. Praise God. But I'm talking about having a promise on our life. I'm having a promise. I'm talking about having a promise that God will never leave us nor forsake us. He will be there if we will be there. Oh, somebody say, praise the Lord. Lord. Well, you came and listened to me. The eyes of the Lord. Is this the truth? Come on, is this the truth? The eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Does that say that? In one place it says even their prayers are an abomination. Do you know evil men sometimes pray? They don't have no intent on changing them. Did you know that the scripture says that? That even their prayer is an abomination? There is one prayer that God will hear from them, and that is repentance. I do not want God sticking his fingers in his ear when I'm talking to him. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I don't want him to do that. I I want him to hear me. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Amen. Praise God. Barnabas told the Christians, amen, over and around Antioch, that they, in Acts 11, 23, that with purpose of heart they would cleave to the Lord you know he talks about married married folks the scriptures talk about married folks amen praise God amen I can't, I'm trying to remember the scripture amen but it talks about them being married amen Praise God, huh? Well, yeah, they become one. But the word there, I'm trying to remember it, but it, this, just like this word right here, cleave, it means, it means to glue. To glue. To glue. Married people are never supposed to be separated. You know that? They're not. He that finds a wife finds a good thing. Obtain favor of the Lord. But that's a union whenever they're married. It's, it's brought together, and God recognizes it, and it's supposed to be like they're glued together. You ever tried to separate two pieces of paper that's glued together? You tear them up. There's a lot of disaster. Amen. Praise God. Well, you know what? Jesus has a bride. Jesus has a woman he's married to. They take his name in water baptism. Come on. They, they get his spirit. Amen. Inside of their lives. Amen. They get married. Amen. I don't mean to be uh, disgusting or anything, but there is, a, there is a relationship with married couples that those two become one. Amen. Nobody else is involved in that. Nobody else can come into that. Amen. It's holy. It's righteous. Amen. Praise God. And you know what? God has a relationship with his people too. Just like that. When people are filled with the Holy Ghost, the Bible says he that's joined to the Lord is one spirit. And it's like the marriage unit. And you know what? God's wife is supposed to be glued to him. Glued to him. And if you try to unglue it, it'll just damage you. It will damage your life. Amen. You know, sinners can get away with a whole lot of things that people that live for God can't get away with. Did you know that? Because people, when they come to the Lord, they make a covenant with God. They become his children, and his name becomes upon their life. It's called over them. Amen. Praise God. <clears throat> and and uh, that he actually has a covenant with them. And the Bible says that he, whom he loves... He chastens. In other words, he corrects them. He doesn't beat you. He loves us. Amen. But so that we'll be partakers of his holiness, he corrects us. 
He uses preaching most of all. Amen. But sometimes people are hard-headed and they don't want to listen. And so he has to get their attention. You know, and, and a lot of times sinners can get by with a whole lot of things because they don't really belong to God yet. They don't have a covenant with him. Oh, somebody say praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. I don't go around spanking other people's kids, but I spank mine. You know why I spank them? Keep them out of the road get hit by a truck. Come on. And that's why God does anything when he corrects us. It's because he loves us. Amen. He loves us. He wants it. He's a good parent. And he wants us to go to heaven. Amen. That's his ultimate desire. Amen. We're to cleave to the Lord with purpose of heart. Deuteronomy 10, 20 says, Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God.
on anybody that didn't have things happen in their life. <clears throat> I personally, I told you a while ago, I had a heart attack. Amen. I had a heart attack. Things happen. I had a heart attack because I like Jalisco's too much. <laughs> <laughs> Fast food. Overweight. You know, some things we bring on ourselves. You know. Praise God. But uh, even people. There's people that got it all down when it comes to physical exercise, and even they face things. Who was it that, well, I guess it was Lou Garrett. He was a ball player, wasn't he? Lou Garrett. Was he Angela? You seen him shaking? He must be the ball fan of him. Amen. But they, he, he took, he was no doubt a healthy person. You got to be to play professional ball, don't you? <laughs> you would think. But yet, trouble came. Trouble came. Things happen in life. Uh, the scriptures even says one event happened to them all. One event happened to them all. He sends his reign on the just and on the unjust. Why do bad things happen to good people? You ever had that question presented to you? It's simple. It really is. If you understand the Bible and believe it, is that our world is in a fallen condition. That's why bad things happen. You don't have to do something bad to have a bad thing happen. But you can rest assured he will be there if you will be there for him. You can rest assured, amen, that you won't be going through it by yourself. You can rest assured, amen, that his eyes are upon you and his ears are open unto your prayers. Amen. Amen. When you don't forsake him, he will not, he will not forsake you. He will not forsake you. He, is there anybody here tonight? Amen. That wants to, I want to be in that place with God. Amen. Praise it. Let's stand. I won't keep you. <clears throat> I want God. Sometime back, I, be, I was in construction most of my life. I learned how to build houses and stuff. And my son-in-law <laughs> decided he wanted to add on to his house. And so... We started, we built him a room. I think it was a 20 by 20. It was a bedroom. It was the back of his house. It's been a little while. It had 10 foot ceilings. The bathroom was in it. Claw, big claw, walk in closet stuff. But <clears throat> as we were, we, we ordered trusses for the roof. Instead of building them, we just ordered trusses. And we were sticking those trusses up on the top. I was sticking them up. And he was on the tail end of it, down lower. I was walking up the ladder and throwing them up over the top plate, 10 foot top plate. And then we'd scoot them down and we'd stationary them, you know, where they wouldn't flop over. They'd be standing up, made our gable in and stuff, and just kept bringing them back. And one time I, I, I took one of them up there. They're not super heavy, but they were two guys it's a pretty good chore especially an old guy so I was taking it up the ladder and I threw it up there and I felt something just just something sting me 
you know, I, 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 it didn't hurt hardly at all. Just, I was just, I thought I got a sticker in me, and I was going, <coughs> and I walked down the ladder, <laughs> and I, and after I got done, I walked down and looked at it, and I had a stick sticking plum all the way through my finger. It was right in the, right there. It was right in the center of my finger. It looked like a toothpick sticking out both sides. It was right in the center. It really was. And I was shocked, Freddie. I was shocked. I really was. Not because it was gory looking, but I was shocked because it didn't hurt. And I wasn't in shock. You know, it didn't hurt. It didn't bleed. It just was sticking right through the center of my finger. I thought you had a bone in there. Do you have bones in there, Angela? Do you? Is there one bone or two bones there? One bone? But it was, I mean, it was down in the thick part of my finger here, sticking out both sides like a toothpick on both sides. And uh, I told Robert, I said, well, I, I said, I was just, I was walking around saying, look at this. Look at this. I was flabbergasted, as they say. Flabbergasted. Not that I had it stuck through my finger, but it didn't, I could, it didn't hurt. There was no pain associated with it. So Robert went and got some pliers, and, and he pulled it out. He pulled it out. And do you know what? The next day, there was absolutely no swelling, none. I could not even tell where it went in my finger. The next day, it, didn't, it never hurt me. It never caused my finger to be stiffened up or anything. You know what? That was one of them times. It happened, but he took care of me without me even having to call on his name because I called on his name that morning. I called on his name that morning, and I've gotten into a habit of calling on his name every morning. Amen, because I don't never know what I'm going to face, and I don't want to know that God is there, and he's not going to leave me, and he's not going to forsake me. Amen? And he won't do it for you either. He won't leave you. He will not forsake you if you will just not forsake him. Don't forsake him. Put him in his rightful place in your life as Lord. That means before you. That's before you. He's not your co-pilot. He's your pilot. You scoot over and let him fly your plane. Amen. Praise God. <coughs> Amen. Praise God. Amen. Can we pray for you? You going to go in the army? Would that be all right? I don't want to inconvenience you or put you on the spot. Would you like that? Would you like for us get your kin folks to come up here with you, you and your dear wife? Amen. Well, come on up here. I don't mean to put you on the spot. Brother Green's fixing going to the military, him and his wife both. <laughs> Amen. And uh, we want the Lord to keep his hand upon them. Right? Come on, Brother Freddie. Get up here. Praise God. We're just going to pray. Is that all right? I don't want to embarrass you. Okay. Is that okay with you? Okay. Praise God. Stand back up just a little bit and just let your loved ones, I want you to surround you. Amen. Just surround them. Come on up here, Sister Annette. Come on up here. Praise God. Praise God. Would everybody join us in prayer? Praise God. Praise God. There's nothing magic about the oil.